Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to the last part of this uh, series on triggering animations. And this time what we're going to be going through is uh, kind of a recap on our door. So when we, uh, when we first started, we learned how to use simple animations to trigger this door and to make it open and close and do the kind of things that we want to be able to do. Now, as we've seen, the door can be problematic in the way that it is. So let's go ahead and see what that, that works like. So let's, uh, let's hit um, our play button and let's just take a look at some of the problems that are caused by our door, okay, and how we're going to resolve those. So in this tutorial, what we're going to really be working on is a state machine style door. It's going to be an easier tutorial than what we did in our last two tutorials. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward. We're really just going to be looking at the state machine uh, again, and we're going to be using the state machine to manage our, our door. And when I say state machine, I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying the same thing as our animation controller. Uh, so anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at our door and see what kind of problems the door gives us. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of walk into the door and we can see that as, as I walk to the door, I, I now got locked out kind of, right? So this can be problematic. Um, we can we can run into the door. We can you know have all sorts of problems with this door. So oh, I want to get through it. I can't quite get through it. It's it's stuck in a weird state, and I just can't get through this door no matter what I do. So unless I use the door in a way that it's really expected to be used, it can be really a, 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 a trick to get through it. Um, it's a little easier on this side, but not really. As you can see, I can get stuck here too. Right now, I'm just not able to get through that door uh, in a way that makes sense, okay? So let's go ahead and pop over to this door and see the same, you know, what happens on this door when, when we use this one. So here, uh, no matter what I do, the door opens in a fashion that makes sense and closes in a fashion that makes sense. And if I walk into it and let it open, it'll actually stay open for me. And then when I walk through it, it'll close as expected. So this door is behaving a lot better, okay? And um, it's a lot more predictable. And we don't get weird um, you know, speed ups or slow downs where it's trying to compensate for what position it's supposed to be in. And that's all thanks to, this, uh, to, the, to the animation controller. So, uh, so we're gonna learn how to make a door that actually works exactly as we want it to, all right? Yeah, that's gonna be basically it. So let's get to it and let's make a nicely working door. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our, uh, our door object and let's just see, uh, like we have in all the other examples, let's, let's just see how I've broken down the animations and um, why I've done what I've done. Okay, so uh, if we right click on the door and then go find asset in browser, that'll take you to this door folder and you'll now be able to look at the different uh, pieces that are in here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to notice is that we do have an animation controller, uh, so that's here. Um, which means that I had to create the animation controller, which again, if you wanted to create it yourself, you would go right click, create, and then animation controller, and then just name it door. Um, that's how I did it, okay? So, um, so I've got this door animation controller. I've got my materials. I've got the skeleton from our animations. Um, I've got my flow graph, which is standard. As soon as we create a, a, a flow graph inside of our unit, it's going to automatically create that. But then here's really the important part is our four different animations. Okay. Now on the original one, we only had two animations and that's because it's already complex and difficult to work with. So adding things like moving door handles, I had to basically incorporate those in part of the door open. So, um, so that it was easier to manage. Okay. So that's another problem without using an animation controller is when you have other pieces of your animation, it just gets more and more complex. Um, so you have to simplify things like combining them into one animation. Um, in this one, what we did was we, we handled it a little more elegantly. So our door, um, our door handle down and our door handle up are two separate animations. So uh, basically I just exported them separately. Okay, so I've got a door handle down, I've got a door handle up, and then I've got a door close and I've got a door open. Okay, so those are the four states of animation that I'm going to have. Okay, so, um, so that's basically it. Now in our flow graph, if we were to go ahead and take a look at that, um, we're going to see that um, we have a very simple flow system. Okay, so when we hit our door collision, we're going to go ahead and send the command open door to the animation controller. 
and when we leave it, we're gonna send the command to close the door. All right, so those are really our only two um, pieces of flow that we have to even do. So much easier to work with than our last, uh, our last door, right? Um, in terms of uh, flow logic. Okay, so we're literally gonna let all of the, the real work happen within, our, um, with our, within the animation controller itself. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so this is basically all we're gonna have to do. So if we wanna recreate this animation controller event, we're just gonna go right click, animation, send animation controller event. And from here, we can go ahead and pick our unit, which is me and our event, which is gonna be open door. And that would be all we'd have to do. And then we would just send the enter to the in. Okay, so that's all we have to do to create these animation controller events. Um, but we do need to have this, this event uh, described. So we're gonna use the, the, the animation controller for that. I just wanted to show you that the logic in here is very straightforward. And we'll come back to this once we get our stuff defined. Now, uh, for the, the door collision, we're doing basically the exact same thing as we did in our last uh, tutorial where we had the door. Uh, so we have this, this invisible mesh um, right here, which is what we're gonna be colliding with to give those commands of when we walked into the door or when we walked out of the door. So we're gonna use this box as our collision mesh to know if the, the door should be opening or closing, okay? So uh, very straightforward there as well. Um, and we're just gonna make sure that we set that to not visible, okay? So that's the only thing we really have to make sure of is that it's set to not visible. And the reason we can see it right now is I've enabled invisible meshes. If I turn that back off again, we'll see that it is in fact uh, not, not visible, okay? So that's pretty much all we have to do for our setup of the door itself. Now, how about the animation controller? Let's go ahead and dig into that and see what's going on there. So if we go into our door, animation controller, Okay, so within our animation controller, what we have is a few different ways to get to the same final result. And the reason that we're doing that is because we want to account for the possibility of interruptions, okay? So um, basically, if while the door handle is you know, moving downward, if we were to walk outside of our box and issue the closed door command, we don't want it to act the same way as if it were to play through in a complete cycle. Okay, so that's why we have kind of two different paths that we're taking. Well, technically three if we consider this one as well, but these two are basically the same. Okay, so um, what we've got is, um, so what we're gonna have is effectively two different paths. We have one where we're gonna open the door with uh, you know, issuing the closed door command because we've walked into it and then we walked out of it quickly so we need to issue the closed door command but we don't want it to just jump to the closed door right we want it to do the full open door cycle and then go to the closed door cycle um, this way it always opens in the same fashion uh, no matter whether we walk into it and walk right away from it or if we walk into it wait there and then walk away from it right so if we allow it to do its full natural path it's going to be following this outside path however if we were to cut it off short it's going to take these two and do this instead, okay? So let's actually build this uh, from scratch and let's, let's do it all, um, you know, together here. So I, I think it'll just be good for you to see the entire process from start to finish once uh, rather than seeing, you know, kind of a completed task. This can be a little confusing and I want to make sure I make it as, as straightforward as possible for you. So let's go ahead and delete everything and let's start by bringing in our animations. So the first thing we're gonna have is our, um, our handle down. So let's drag that in. Let's drag in our handle up. Let's drag in our door open. Now I know we're gonna need the door open twice, so let's bring the door open in again, okay? And let's bring our door close, okay? So those are all the pieces we're gonna need and we can go ahead and maximize now and start looking at it uh, a little closer. So let's move our door handle over here to the left, our door handle up right here, our door close over to the right, and our door open uh, here, and our second door open there, okay? So now we've got all the, the pieces that we're gonna need, and we can start thinking about how we're gonna construct this, okay? So we have these two commands, uh, open door and closed door. I guess it's, uh, oh, I haven't saved it. That's why that's still happening. So if I go ahead and save it, we'll now see that open door does nothing and closed door does nothing. 
Now these animation events, uh, as we remember from the, uh, the, the record player tutorial, are created in our events uh, system. So if we wanted to create a new one, we would just go right click, add new animation event, and we would just name that animation event. I've already got these created, so rather than you know recreating them, they're straightforward. You just right click, create, and then you're done. Uh, so we're just gonna use the ones that exist, the open door and the closed door. Okay, so now what we're gonna have to do is kind of just lay out our general workflow, all right? So what we're gonna try to do is first work through it in a sequential fashion, because we know that the door is basically gonna follow a normal path, and it's really good to kind of think in this fashion. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from the empty to the door handle down because that's our first animation that we want to play. And on here, we're going to go ahead and select on open door. So when we want, what we, what we basically want is to, uh, you know, issue the open door command. And the first thing we're going to do is move the handle downward. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is move the handle upward. Then we're going to move the handle to the, uh, you know, open position. So once the handle goes down and then up, we want to open the door. And let's just start with that, okay? So these two, now these two need an event also, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set these to on animation end, okay? Because we want these to follow sequentially, right? We want the door handle to go down, then we want it to finish that animation, then we want it to go up, then we want it to finish that animation, and then we're going to start opening the door. Okay, so so this is already beginning our little cycle here, and this is going to be if you were to walk into the door and just let it play, right? We're not going to interrupt it. We're just going to let it play all the way through. Okay, so we, we can actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's connect this one. This one is going to be on our closed door event. Okay, so if we select this, we can then say on closed door, and then this when it's finished is going to go to here. So this is going to be on animation end. Okay. So let's set on animation end. Now, if we were to go ahead and hit the um, save button and try opening the door, we're gonna see that we're gonna have some problems, okay? First, we're gonna notice that we're just getting stuck here, okay? Why are we getting stuck there, right? It might be a, might be a question that you have, right? So let's, uh, let's, let's stop that and let's take a look at what's happening here. Now, on this door handle, I've already set the loop to be off, okay? If we had, had this on, we would actually see that it would have stuck on the on position, right? So it gets stuck, right? It's getting stuck right there. So what's happening is it's basically coming to here and it's waiting for the animation to end, but because it's in a loop, it, it never ends, okay? So what we wanna make sure of is that we de-click this loop uh, command. So go ahead and de-click that one and make sure that this loop is off also, all right? So now we should find that we're gonna go to this point. Now this loop is stuck on also. So it's probably gonna just get stuck on this door open. So let's try it. And as we can see, we move through the down and then the up, but now it's looping on that, okay? So what we wanna do here is also say, don't loop, okay? In fact, we, we can pretty much assume that we don't want any of these to loop, all right? So let's just select them all and turn off the loop function, okay? So now loop is turned off on all of our events. So we should get a full playthrough of our cycle. So let's go ahead and hit open door. The handles move down, the handles move up, the door opens, and it doesn't close. Why not? Well, we haven't issued the closed door command, right? So now it's waiting for the closed door command to be issued. So if we hit closed door, we should find that the door closes and is now sitting in the empty state, okay? So now we've got a full cycle of exactly what we want. Right? But what would happen if we were to hit the open door and then hit closed door all of a sudden? Well, it didn't take that command, did it? So if we would have walked into the door and then walked away, the door would just remain open. But we don't want that. We want it to always be in the closed position, right? So that doesn't really work. It kind of works. It opens nicely. And if we were to be waiting properly in the in the collision box for us to issue the closed door command, this would have worked great, right? Because if I hit closed door now, everything's hokey dory, no problem. But if I'm inside of either of those, you know, while the, the handles are happening, we get nothing. And then we all of a sudden get this weird wonkiness, right? Like we don't want wonkiness ever, right? We want it to always be good. So that that happens, that closed door happens because we're jumping here, right? We're already in our open door. So therefore, if we issue the closed door, it's going to tween to here, right? So there's two problems, right? We've got it. If I, if I select it 
If I select close door while I'm in either handles down or handle up, we get nothing. But if I'm in the open door, I get this wonky all of a sudden jump command, okay? So we have to do two different things to solve those problems, okay? And that's where this is gonna come into play. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is connect this and connect this, okay? And in these, we're gonna wanna say close door and close door. And then we're gonna go from here and we're gonna say on animation end. Okay, so now let's see what happens. All right, let's save and give it a play and see what happens. So now if we hit open door and hit close door right away, it kind of works, right? So we're getting it to do more of what we wanted. But if you noticed, it jumped a little bit, right? Not quite exactly what we wanted, almost, but not quite, right? And if we wait for the open door, well, we still get that fast forwarding motion, right? So we don't really want that either. We want it to always be smooth. So we're very close, but we're not quite there yet, okay? So what we wanna do in here is we wanna make sure that the, um, the closed door waits for the end of the animation. And the same thing here, we wanna make sure that it is waiting for the end of the animation, okay? So in fact, we could even make this a little more elegant, I believe, let's try it by doing no, that won't work. You have to do it this way. That's right. So we will do close door from here and we'll leave this as wait until end. Okay. So now we can see that when we hit open door and then close door, it plays properly. All right. So that's why we have this secondary issued command. Now, if we were to go from our open door, right? So let's say we do open door. And right when the door starts to open, we hit close door, right? See how it jumped? Well, that's the next thing we need to solve. And we're gonna solve it in a very similar fashion, okay? So how we're gonna do that is when we issue this close door command, we're gonna go ahead and say, wait until end, all right? So now we should find that the open door, no matter when we click it, is gonna do the appropriate thing. So it works properly there and it works properly here, okay? So as you can see, this door is already acting a lot more appropriately and is much closer to what we want than what we had originally, which was a door that kind of does what it wants at when it wants to. So we just, you know, we're issuing the command and it just immediately flies to the open position or immediately flies to the closed position. Um, and as you can see, when I was walking around, that can lead to its own problems. This will give you much fewer problems, all right? So, um, so that's basically uh, what we've got with our door, all right? So now we just need to know how to trigger this closed door and the open door. And I alluded to it earlier, but, um, but you know, now we have the pieces in place so we can actually make use of them. So let's, let's go ahead and close our state machine or the animation controller rather. And let's take a look at the door again and see what we're doing in here to trigger it, okay? So again, we have our door collision object, right? So if we were to go visible, this is our door collision object. When the character walks into that collision object, we wanna be able to issue the command open door. And when we walk out of that box, we wanna issue the command close door, okay? So let's look at our door collision really quick. We have it set to a static mesh and it's basically just the door collision and it's set to the type box. The only thing that we have to remember again is that the shape template needs to be a character trigger, otherwise the character won't trigger it, okay? So that's really the only thing that we have to worry about there, all right? But now once we have that set up in our unit flow, we have a physics trigger and we've set it to the actor of door collision because that's our collision mesh and, or the box, right? So this door collision is related to this door collision, which is related to this box, okay? And when we enter it, it's gonna go ahead and um, issue the open door command. And when we leave it, it's gonna issue the closed door command, just like we were doing in the state machine. All right, so this is uh, basically all we really needed to do to create this. And I just accidentally enabled the visibility of that mesh. So let me just turn off the visibility and save it again. So now it's disappeared. And let's go ahead and play it one more time to make sure that everything we did works, all right? So let's go close this and start it up. 
play. We should find that if we hit F2 and walk into the collision mesh, our door opens as expected and closes as expected. Now, note also that I walk in and walk out and it works appropriately, right? And if I do it slowly and let it do its own thing, it'll also work appropriately, all right? So we now have a really nicely working door mesh using the animation controller much more elegant than what we had before. Okay, so if we were to, again, take a look at the difference between that door and this door, note the difference. It's, you know, moving rapidly. I can get stuck to the door. Here we've got it staying closed. So it works sometimes, but it doesn't work all the times. Not exactly preferable. So the state machine or the animation controller version is a much better door as it always acts appropriately. And it also doesn't speed up or slow down. Now, there are some things we can do to make this a little nicer. Like, I personally think those door handles move a little too slowly, and I'm kind of sitting there waiting for them. So let's look at some of the other nice things we can do in the, uh, in the animation controller, all right? So let's go ahead and save that. And let's just take a quick look at what we can do to make this a little bit better, all right? So here we have our door handle down. And we have this playback rate. Now, I feel like the door handle moves a little too slowly down, right? So let's say I wanted to make it faster. I can simply go in here and say um, two times the playback rate and make this two times the playback rate and save it. And let's give it a quick play. And we see that the handles move a lot more realistically or a little more smoothly, okay? and we still have everything else working appropriately. So a little nicer. And that's, uh, that's basically it. So um, this is an easy one and a short one and uh, kind of nice after the two longer ones we had that were a lot more complicated. So, uh, so yeah, here's how to make a door with the animation controller where it always acts the way you want it to rather than the way you don't want it to and causes uh, collision problems and you get stuck on it and all sorts of other problems. So if you're willing to invest the time, the, uh, the animation controller can do a much nicer job than just using the simple animations and hopefully this illustrates that to you. All right, so that's gonna conclude this video and also this series. And I really hope that you, uh, you learned something from the series and you continue to make uh, really cool triggered animations from it, all right? And uh, thank you very much. If you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, please say so uh, in the comments. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or, you know, if you felt that there was something wrong in the way that I taught, please also say so in the comments. And uh, I'll see you on the next tutorial series that I do. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.